Good evening, and welcome to the San Anselmo Town Council Candidate Forum. My name's Doug Kelly. I'm one of the seven unpaid directors of the Coalition of Sensible Taxpayers. It's our pleasure to be able to host this and uh, to have an opportunity for the candidates to speak to the people of San Anselmo. I'd like now to introduce Dick Spotswood, who will be moderating. Dick has chosen all the questions. Many of the questions came from residents, but he will have the final say on all questions. Thank you so much. Well, like thank you. Welcome to the Cost San Anselmo Town Council Debate and Forum. I'm Dick Spotswood, Government and Politics Columnist for the Marin Independent Journal. This evening's Candidates Forum is sponsored and organized by Cost, Marin's Coalition of Sustainable Taxpayers. I need to start both by recognizing Marin's Cost Chair, Mimi Willard, and Cost Board Member Doug Kelly, who both have done yeoman work in setting up this program. There are four candidates for two posts on the five-member San Anselmo Town Council. Incumbent Steve Berto, incumbent Ford Green, challenger and nonprofit executive director Carol Calloway, and challenger and talk show host Guy Meyer. The ground rules, we're gonna start in alphabetical order. Each candidate will make an opening statement of two orders, of two minutes. When that's finished, we'll go into question and answers. Once again, as Doug said, uh, we, we're going to start with one question which has been disseminated to the uh, to candidates from, the, from cost. But after that, we're going to candidate questions that come from people who have registered uh, for this uh, event and have submitted questions. Uh, more than we can possibly cover, but we'll pick and choose from those. And uh, that's what we'll do as far as questions. You'll have one minute, 30 seconds each to answer questions. If you think appropriate, you're entitled after that to a 30 second rebuttal. Either somebody said something about yourself or there's a comment that goes to something that's core in your campaign and you want to say something, whatever you choose, 30 seconds. Once we finish question and answers, uh, and we will be timely tonight, uh, we will be asking you to each give a concluding statement in the reverse order of how we started. Uh, and the concluding statement is basically telling the viewers out there why they should cast a ballot for you. After that, we'll say thank you and uh, remind voters that they, uh, they can now cast their ballots because most people, almost everybody out there, has received a ballot in the mail and you now received your voter handbooks in the mail. So you've, election day in Marin County, California isn't one day, it's about a month and we've already started. Well, let's start right now. Before we launch, Dick, I just want to ask a, a sure. clarifying question. Since I'll be first up in the question department, is the question which will uh, be coming to me that which you referenced being previously disseminated? Yes. Because if <laughs> it I, is, I, will, I, will I need you, you to ask me the question because I didn't read it and I don't know. No, I, I, I'll give it to you. Uh, just, but before I do, I'll give it to you, everybody in advance because just a chance to Good. talk about things. Right. Uh, it's simple. Have you read the California Coalition of Sensible Taxpayers criteria? And also, if so, what are your comments? They have set criteria, which I believe they've sent to everybody, as to what they regard as important in tax issues. Uh, so that'd be the first question. Then we'll go on to purely, mostly, San Anselmo related questions. Uh, Steve Berto. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm San Anselmo Council Member Steve Berto. Uh, it has been the honor of my lifetime to serve our community as a member of the Town Council. I bring over a decade of service to the town, including my current role on the town council, the Ross Valley Fire Board, and the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority, in addition to numerous other town committees and commissions. I'm extremely proud of the work we've done over the last three years. San Anselmo is alive like never before. Coming out of the pandemic, we not only survived, we thrived. And a big part of that was action that the council take had taken during the early stages of the pandemic. We were one of the first municipalities to, we were one of the first municipalities to allow for the creation of parklets and outdoor dining. We provided assistance to our local businesses, renters and artists and created community spaces like Creek Park that allowed people to gather safety, safely. 
For me, it's always about listening, collaborating, and bringing people together to address our town's most pressing issues. During my time on the council, I've done just that. In the wake of the failure of Measure M in 2019, I brought both sides of that issue together to create a three-year plan to get the much-needed work at Memorial Park done on time and under budget. When racist and anti-Semitic acts happened in our town last summer, I organized a rally at the site of one of those hateful acts for our community to gather together, denounce hate, and heal together. I also led the efforts to create our racial equity committee in town, which has become a model for other communities. My endorsements are a reflection of the level of commitment and hard work that I put into this job. I am the only candidate endorsed by every organization to make an endorsement in this race, including being the only candidate endorsed by the Marin Independent Journal, the only candidate endorsed by the Marin Democratic Party, and the only candidate endorsed by the Sierra Club. I'm also honored to be endorsed by my colleagues, Mayor Alexis Feynman, Council Member Brian Colbert, and scores of our community leaders. I bring a wealth of passion, experience, and dedication to the table, and I look forward to working together to ensure that San Anselmo remains, remains vibrant, family-friendly, and safe. Thank you, Steve Bertle. Ford Green. Thank you to Doug Kelly, Coloss, the Media Center, and Dick Spotswood for this chance to publicly engage. I've been in the Ross Valley for 69 years, through the major floods in 55, 82, and 05. Since 07, continuously elected member of the town council, four times in a row. In town government, longer than anyone, including staff, people trust me because I look them in the eye and I tell them the truth. With help, I've accomplished a lot. Help lead the town in a good direction. The town is doing great. Look around you. The plaza and weekend night closures with great music and community, consistent road repaving, beautiful new Red Hill median, good shape budget, addressing firestorm threat working to get three firefighters on each fire engine, fighting to reclaim Creek Park Plaza from the chain link fence the county has used to cut off public access. Those results come from government that cooperates and collaborates. The question is, do you have confidence in the direction San Anselmo is heading? And if you do, remember the adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. My accomplishments include, as mayor, navigated the early days of COVID-19 and ongoing economic and social recovery, ensuring the Sky Ranch, Bald Hill, and Hawthorne Park open space purchases, only council member to stand up to save Memorial Park from becoming a detention basin, 2015 by initiative, the voters agreed. Oppose the $9 million tax for Memorial Park the town voted down in 2019. Without the tax, we are renovating the park now. First to advocate the consolidation of Twin Cities and San Anselmo into Central Marin Police Agency, saving our town millions. Maintaining and repairing roads through Measure D and current ballot Measure J. Adopting membership in Marin Clean Energy, swing vote. Enacting ordinances prohibiting the use of plastic straws, single-use plastics, banning leaf blowers gas-powered, restricting McMansion development by adopting a floor area ratio. Thank you. Lord Green, thank you. Next, Carol Calloway. 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 <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Dick, and thank you to Koss for putting this event on. Um, I grew up in San Anselmo. In 82, I watched from my bedroom window as the flood devastated our town. Later, I moved into public housing with my mother, an artist who helped found the San Anselmo Artist Studios. So from a young age, I was very aware of how local government could make a real difference in people's lives. After college, I moved to Seattle, where I raised two sons and built a 30-year-plus career in conservation policy, environmental protections, and public health. My concern about the climate emergency led me to focus on transportation advocacy, an area where, particularly at the local level, we can have the biggest impact on carbon emissions. In, 19, in, in 2019, I was thrilled to move back to San Anselmo to lead the Marin County Bicycle Coalition, running beloved programs such as the Safe Routes to Schools program. In just over three years, I have almost doubled our operating budget, more than doubled our number of staff, given significant raises across the organization, and added four new programs. We are halfway through a five-year strategic plan and have already accomplished many of the goals we set forward for ourselves, 
including increasing the number of miles protected by of protected bikeways, increasing access for people who mountain bike, and creating a reserve fund that was zero when I started, but today is almost 20% of our operating budget. I'm the only candidate running on the or on the council who has run an organization. I'm known as a collaborative, caring leader who inspires her team and gets things done. And I know how to treat staff with respect. I'm endorsed by Mayor Feynman, Council Member Colbert, former Mayors McInerney and Wright, the Financial Advisory Committee uh, Chair Mon Marie Onrio, and our Climate Action Chair Kathleen Gundry. I would be honored to have your vote. Thank you. Chair McCullough, we thank you for being here. And now, Guy Meyer. Thank you, Dick, and thank you, uh, Cost. Um, to the people of San Anselmo, I want to thank you for most of for uh, the years of living here it have been so uh, excellent for me. I moved to San Anselmo in 1975. I have indeed lived here most of my life. And my campaign is going to be entirely based on your endorsement. And there is only one way through our 21st century, in my opinion, and that is we have to have always a strong local democracy and prioritize local ecology. We have many, we are full of children in San Anselmo, and every time we look at them on the street, we know what our responsibility is. We must forge a new path. There are, there are elements to our world that surrounds us, even though we are staying, looking at life in San Anselmo, that impact in so many different ways. One of the biggest impacts that's coming up against San Anselmo right now in all of California is the state mandated housing plans. Uh, you may have heard of this. The state is uh, telling San Anselmo that it has to build 833 units and 1,000 by the year 2030. 1.8 million all told across the state. There is a statement on a, in from the Brown Act that when I was a commissioner I read, it says, we, the people, <laughs> we, the people of this state, excuse me, do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies that serve them. Now, of course, we accept the laws and rules as written, but there is a statement there for all of us to listen to. We have the, uh, I am in favor of keeping the platform over the creek. We have to deal with the county's uh, lack of respect for our own sovereignty. And there are issues in the town in how we run our government and how we relate to the people. Thank you. Thank you, Guy Meyer. Let's go into the questions. This is the one question that Cost has prepared and asked me to ask, so we'll start with Ford, and I read it before, and I'm going to uh, read it again, if I can, and just to, just to understand, Ford, then Terrell, then Guy, and then Steve will answer this question in that order, and then the next question, uh, uh, Terrell, you'll start off, okay? And the question is, have you read the Coalition of Sensible Taxpayers criteria for tax measures? If so, do you have any comment, input, view, advice, complaint, or suggestion? Thank you. Here with my pants around my ankles, I must confess that I haven't. Uh, however, I have dealt, in fact, uh, with uh, cost applications of its principles of uh, taxation in the context of our current ballot measure J. Uh, I helped write the ballot language, and what that does is continue uh, our sales tax measure, which brings needed revenues into the town, uh, and increase it by half a cent. Cost called us out and said, listen, in your proposed ballot language, you don't specifically identify that there's a half a cent increase, and we object to that and think you ought to do better. Uh, cost also, in the run-up to that, it said, uh, despite the fact that the people who were polled said that they didn't need uh, to have the tax renewed periodically cost thought that it should be. And so we held, a, or called and held a special meeting to adopt a uh, cost recommendation of uh, having more explicit language regarding the tax measure uh, included. Uh, and so by that, uh, what I'm able to infer is that the cost, principles of cost are dedicated to providing accurate information to taxpayers so that taxpayers can make informed decisions. That's what we did. And our ballot measure is not objected to, to co by cost, as is Larkspur and Belvedere. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ford. Carol. Hi, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, taxes here are high. I mean, I just moved from Washington State three years ago and um, I'm paying a lot more in taxes, but I also look around and see the services that we're providing and the beautiful open space that we have and um, I'm willing to do all that I can. Um, you know, so I looked at the, the costs um, uh, advisory for how taxes should be made and I agree with a lot of the things that they're saying there. Um, one of them is accountability, um, and that's why I'm on the Capital Programs Monitoring Committee for San Anselmo. There should be accountability when taxes are created. Uh, number two is that uh, they should uh, respond to a need, and they should be common sense. I believe that there should be polling for community priorities whenever a new tax is put into play. Uh, number three, um, you know, I support Measure J. Um, and Measure H, uh, our sales tax and also our library tax. I do know that when it first uh, was being approved, the council members uh, wanted it to go on forever and it wasn't until cost intervened that they decided to um, make it sunset. And I think it's really important for tax measures like this to sunset because you know when it first came into play, um, the thing that was pulling the highest that people cared most about was very different than what people care about now. So um, it needs to change with the times and people need to decide whether or not it's a priority every time. Carol, thank you, Guy. Um, I, have I have read the uh, cost analysis and their, their recommendations. I think they fit the name of the group. They're sensible. I, of the number of paragraphs, I've absorbed them, but my, my thought is yes, they're sensible and somehow the people have to penetrate into any measure and put it to a test in terms of where, where does it lead to? Where are we going? Has this town, does it use so much money, use money in a manner that doesn't recognize the, the inherent responsibility to streamline. Does streamlining actually make it a more effective government? Now, some of the money that we're currently wasting is, is partially, is partly because of the state's overbearing manner right now to all the communities, believing that they have to dictate to local towns how they run their business. So right now, the town of San Anselmo has hired a, a uh, consultant to handle the, the Reno numbers, to handle the whole mandate. Uh, the, the amount of cost that that would be, I can only imagine, very, very huge. We have the racial equity audit that is in the thousands. We have the pollsters. We have, uh, we'll get to more. There's a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. And thank you for all for respecting the time limits on this. We're doing just fine with that. The more time we do this, the more questions we can ask. Uh, and Steve, your response. Steve, so, so yes, I do. I have read them, and I do agree. The only one that I, you know, that stood out to me was the reasonable sunset one, not because I disagree with it, just because that's subjective, right? Uh, what's reasonable to me may be uh, unreasonable to somebody else, but I. I do, I have read all of them and, and agree. I agree that accountability is good. I will say that, you know, as a member of the San Anselmo Town Council, I think we've done a fine job of being good fiscal stewards for our residents. And we've done what we've done with our uh, annual budget is really put forth programs that enrich the community and um, our programs that our, our residents and our businesses really want. Um, and I think that's important because, um, you know, some of the things Guy just mentioned, um, they're not taxes. That's just things that we use out of our operating budget for uh, things like, um, you know, a racial equity audit or to create parklets. Um, those aren't generated by tax per se, they're part of our budget. Um, things like Measure J and Measure H, those are taxes. And within that context, I do believe that, um, you know, cost is charter is very appropriate and pertinent. Everybody out there knows the price of infl inflation that we're paying right now. Whether you go to the grocery store or you go to the gas pump for those who are still driving cars, it's really having an effect. So having reasonable tax measures um, is a very important thing, particularly right now. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Carol, you'll start off this question. Okay. And this comes from a, a, a person who wrote in to us. 
And so they start by saying, I've lived in San Anselmo long enough. That's, I don't say that. The, uh, the uh, writer said that. Okay. I've lived in San Anselmo long enough to remember major flooding downtown, businesses destroyed. I consider it to be the, be the single most important issue that we face. How will you work to mitigate flooding in downtown San Anselmo? Yeah, so it's a really tough question. I mean, our town was built on a floodplain. So there's not a lot of things that we can do, but there are certainly more solutions that, than they've come up with um, in the uh, 30 years that I was out of town. Um, so one of the things we can do is create more permeable surfaces. So getting rid of concrete in, in places, even when they're where we need parking, we can have permeable surfaces. Um, a really good example of that is in the Red Hill uh, median. Uh, now when water goes through it, it gets cleaned as it goes out to our watershed. Those are really wonderful ways of, of um, creating a win-win. Um, another situation that happened uh, last year was Phoenix Lake was used as a, um, a, a retention basin because it happened to be empty when we had our big flooding event. So I'd like to formalize our relationship with MMWD and make sure that whenever we know there's going to be a major flooding event that water can be pumped from that that basin that is close to homes and endangering our community, it can be pumped up to higher levels. That's another thing we can do. Another thing we can do is um, create grants to help mitigate um, the cost to seniors um, of having their homes flood and then also help um, seniors and people with disabilities um, prepare for storms when they happen. Thank you. Great. Guy? Well, um, the flood district and the plans that we have been living with and bought into basically, because we approved the, the whole uh, process, uh, has been a, a, a kind of a Kafka-esque miscue uh, left with leaving us having spent millions of dollars of San Anselmo taxpayer money into a plan that the detention basins, it was wishful thinking to think that they were ever going to prevent the flooding. The, uh, the county itself and its reports stated that incapacity channel work was going to have to going to be, take up at least 50% uh, in, in one uh, story of, of whatever it was needed. The detention basins were not going to be the end all, save all of the town. We are living in California, and nature is all around us. We have to, the, our emergency services are there to protect our community, but there are certain elements that as much of technology and science can do, they are just gonna create more damage to our environment and more ugliness to our environment. We're gonna to have to live with floods. The, uh, they've come approximately every 30 years. They claim that it's a 100-year flood in 2005. Happens about every 30 years. And we can, we can get through it as a community, but everybody has to be prepared. Steve Berto. Oh, by the way, I want to remind you, this round and all the other rounds, if at the end anybody wants to uh, uh, use the 30-second rebuttal, uh, we'll be given an opportunity to do that. Uh, Steve Berto. Can you repeat of the course. question, please, Dick? Uh, the writer said, uh, I've lived in San Anselmo long enough to remember flood, major flooding downtown. Business is destroyed. I consider it to be the single most important issue that we face. How will you work to mitigate flooding in downtown San Anselmo? Sure. So uh, first I'll start by saying I'll, I'll do what I've been doing, which is uh, listening, working collaboratively, and bringing people together. Um, it, it's fascinating to me that this continues to be a question. I've lived in San Anselmo since 2007 and in every candidate's forum that I've watched or participated in, this has always been a question. And here we are 14 years later, 15 years later, and really not a lot to show for it. Something needs to be done. Um, in the past, I've participated in things like Creekside debris cleanups. Um, I'm, a, I'm definitely a, a fan of um, things like bridge raising and stuff that will, you know, uh, make the flow better. 
But at the end of the day, what we really need to do is go back to the drawing board because we've been talking about this for over a decade in San Anselmo and not a lot to show for it. Our businesses downtown, the people who live in the neighborhoods, they get no more protection now than they did then. And that needs to change because yes, we do live in a floodplain and water is gonna go where it goes, but we need to do everything we can to, to prevent that from happening and impacting our businesses. I think um, you know there are a lot of uh, opportunities as we think about moving forward of what we can do, but we need everybody to come together and be willful participants in finding that solution, and that's what I'm committed to do. Thank you, Steve. Ford? I agree with uh, Terrell's points uh, about uh, building up in a floodplain, and the main thing that we can do has to do with uh, having more permeable surfaces. Uh, the Red Hill median she called out, it's a good example. The Magnolia parking lot is, an, uh, is another one. Uh, Phoenix, we, we lucked out uh, because we'd been in a drought and we had the horrendously deep rain at the end of last October where Phoenix filled up overnight. But that's kind of begging the issue. The, the real issue uh, has to do with the county and has to do with the uh, flood fee that was enacted in 07. Uh, it so far has raised $39 million. The county has spent $35 uh, million of that and has almost nothing to show for it. We can't raise bridges because uh, the creek is a, is a FEMA-regulated floodplain, and there are federal rules that apply to it, and those rules the county has disregarded, and they haven't complied with, and, and worse yet, uh, when they're supposed to be collaborative and in partnership with the town of San Anselmo, didn't even tell the town of San Anselmo about the no-rise rule until after uh, 20, 2020. <laughs> uh, I think I'll just stop there because I'm gonna, gonna run out of time and I'll just cut myself off. Um, but there are a lot of rules uh, that the county needs to comply with that it can't and we're out of luck with, with $39 million of flood fee money. Board, thank you. Uh, we're experimenting with this rebuttal, so I'll simply say after we make the rounds, if anybody wants to take advantage of that, just feel free to say so. But the next question is gonna to go to Guy, Guy Meyer. Uh, once again, from, from my viewer. Uh, in 2020, the San Anselmo Town Council voted to prohibit recreational cannabis cannabis dispensaries in the town. Do you agree with that policy? If not, would you seek to change that policy if you were elected or re-elected? Well, I certainly wouldn't seek to change that policy. I do believe that, however, every citizen has the right to buy cannabis, use cannabis as any, every adult. As many years have gone by before this finally has become a status of legal, quasi-legal, as the state controls it so much, it's sort of a, become sort of a, a much more difficult to be illegal with the, being approved. Uh, with that said, I, I think I would like to see someday uh, it be treated like beer or wine, and that I don't know why it has to have all this uh, complications with the state getting involved with it and making these uh, special dispensaries. I don't know why uh, Ludwig's or Someone couldn't handle that and ask for an ID for somebody buying a little something. I think deregulation, to a certain degree, is um, a good, good solution for the people and for, for uh, democracy. Great. Uh, Steve? Yeah. Um, yes, I do support the uh, policy that was passed by the town council. And uh, I was one of the people that voted to put that policy in place. So, uh, so I do support it. Um, and certainly if uh, I am reelected, I would not seek to change that. Um, and, and that's based off, I have nothing against anybody who uses cannabis or cannabis itself. That has to do with uh, talking with residents, really being in touch with what our community wants. And while we were going through that process on the council, scores of residents, um, over 100 people came out to speak on that issue with the vast majority of people being against it. Um, and so uh, I was proud to take that uh, position and put that policy in place because again, our job, you know, I, I always say the, the way I lead is with my ears, not my mouth, I listen. And in 2019 and in 2020, 
that was one of the biggest issues in our town. So I really made an effort to go out there and talk to people about it. And people made an effort to come and find us to tell, the, to tell us how they felt about it. And it was overwhelming that our community was against that. So when we talk about the character of San Anselmo, um, that decision that we made on the council was something that aligned and fit perfectly within the character of our town. Steve, thank you. Ford? Thank you. Uh, I was the primary person in favor of having dispensaries uh, in our town, and that was because 74% of our voters voted for Proposition 64. A very vocal minority opposed it, and the council members, not me, uh, listened to that uh, and prohibited uh, dispensaries. I think that whether or not we have a dispensary ought to be subjected to a, a vote of the people in San Anselmo. There are certain really big issues that hit core rights, and I don't think the town council should make any decisions about people's core rights without them having a say, and the way that people have a say is by having a vote. Examples uh, otherwise of that would be for whether or not to stay as a member in flood zone nine when we're not getting any flooding benefit and the county uh, has taken our, has, has locked up uh, our plaza that is the, the heart of the town. Uh, another one probably is rent control. Uh, rent control impacts uh, people's livelihood, uh, especially with respect to older people. And guess what? I'm one of those older people now. I'm 69 years old. And there are uh, older people. There are a lot in San Anselmo and need representation. So uh, with respect to pot, I think it ought to be sold. Carol. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, this is not my priority to have a dispensary. It's not something that I would bring up if I were elected. Um, I do know that the tax revenue that has been promised from a dispensary uh, a lot of that we're seeing right now, the delivery service also, we get taxes from that. Um, my, when my husband um, was struggling with cancer, we ordered uh, delivery quite often. It was super easy. It was one call and they showed up within hours. Um, and I know that the, the, we were taxed highly for that and the revenue went back to the town. Um, I just, you know, when I'm out talking to people and the people who've been helping me with my campaign, um, they're very concerned about this um, and that it doesn't really meet, uh, it doesn't suit the character of our town. And I would have to agree with that. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next question. Uh, and we'll go starting this time with Steve. Uh, Steve, can you, ex can you explain the justification for the San Anselmo housing element to propose possible developments in such areas as the San Anselmo Post Office, United Market, and public school playing fields. Yeah, um, this is a discussion that we just had uh, last Tuesday, and um, the sites that we wound up picking were uh, the Sunny Hills site, the post office, and on the Greenfield Corridor. Now, the real thing to talk about here is this is very prima facie, right? And I, I think Guy talked earlier about the, the housing mandates and People have talked forever about how the process is and how the process runs. It does take away local control, um, and there, you know, is probably a better way to do it. But within doing this, those sites that we put into our plan, there's no guarantee or even a promise that they're ever going to be developed. And and I think this is why I say we need a better process for it, because there is definitely a need for housing, and we have a really good project that's being built. Uh, at one Lincoln Park right now, um, 16 units, senior living facility, uh, affordable. Um, those are the types of projects that we need to be focused on. But the justification that went into the sites was basically, we need to fit these numbers in. We've been allocated these numbers and we need to make them work. Here's a list of sites that we could potentially choose from. And again, we chose the Sunny Hill site, the post office in Greenfield. As for the schools, I, don't, I, I was not in favor of choosing the school sites um, or the United Market site at this time. Um, but again, as we continue to move forward and continue over the years to get allocations, we're, some of those sites will actually get used up. Thank you. Ford. Uh, affordable housing, top-down legislation from the state that controls our constitutionally protected private property rights is wrong. 
I don't like the state's interference with our local right to determine how we will craft our own community by developing and implementing our own planning and building rules. But where we can do it, I support it. For example, Red Hill Shopping Center, uh, second, maybe even third stories. Uh, adjacent to the San Anselmo Post Office is another viable site, along Greenfield and also uh, United Market. I do draw an absolute line, however. We have worked hard to protect our natural beauty. Remember, Marty Griffin and others stopped a huge community development in now what is the, in the Marin Headlands. Highway 101 was slated to go over Mount Tam and along the Bolinas Ridge to a city of 250,000 at Point Reyes Station. That's where I draw the line. When housing of any sort starts to chew up our precious and magnificent natural beauty, I say no. Some sanctions the state will impose for failure to comply with its affordable housing mandates include annexing open space for housing. That's unacceptable. It's unacceptable also, I think I agree with Steve, uh, to build on schools, uh, but the bottom line is that uh, the town should join with other cities and legally test the legality of these orders coming down from the state of California, controlling our own local prerogatives. Ford, thank you. Carol. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, you know, whether or not we like it, this is the law. It was voted in by the people. Um, I am all about protecting ridge lines and open space. I think all of it, all of the housing that is built should be built uh, near commercial centers. Um, and uh, Ford is correct. If we don't go ahead with a plan, if we don't show the state some kind of plan, we are at risk of them annexing open space. So let's go ahead and find the spaces that we need. It sounds like the consultant is doing a pretty good job. I've been very surprised when I've been attending those meetings. Things have not been very contentious. I absolutely don't think that my alma mater's uh, playground, Wade Thomas, should be annexed as a part of this. But I do like the idea of having workforce uh, housing, so housing for teachers. Um, so a lot of the things that are uh, being discussed are really interesting conversations. We're having conversations about you know, whether or not um, parking lots near grocery stores should be made uh, into housing for the workers in the grocery stores. We're having conversations about um, artists and creative people and whether or not they deserve to have a place to live here in um, our wonderful town. Um, and these are all really important conversations that would not be coming up if we weren't forced to have this discussion. Thank you. Carol, thank you. Guy. Well, it is the issue uh, of, our, of our time here in California, I would say. I joined with Ford. I do believe that whoever is on the council, particularly after this election, uh, we have to stand together. The, uh, we have to stand as uh, to inspire other councils in other parts of Northern California and Southern California too. They're already doing it uh, to 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 let the uh, Sacramento know that this is it's completely it's unconstitutional in in many ways. Population of California has been dropping. It's been, we are not reaching the, the expectations that were the projections of back in the year 2000, back when California was the leading growing population in all the United States. We are not that state anymore. Strangely enough, we are losing population. It's an opportunity, an ecological opportunity, a progressive, if you would use that term, which I don't tend to use very much, an opportunity to think what would progress be if we weren't caught up in this machine that now the state has taken over the job of pushing development. When I was uh, here in the late uh, 1970s, it would be, be a natural to go ahead and speak out against some large development that was impinging on your town. We are not here. We cannot take everybody who wants to move to California. And it's a reality. We are a fragile state. We have an ecosystem that needs to be protected and people as well. Thank you, Guy. Uh, Ford, okay, we're going to start off this question. Oh, I, I got a... Oh, uh, rebuttal. Yes, please. I, I 30 do. seconds. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, Terrell said that the affordable housing rules uh, is the law that was voted in by the people. That's not accurate. Uh, the people did not vote that in. Uh, that's legislation that's been carried by state officials 
who are in the pockets of developers. And in fact, it won't provide much affordable housing, but it will make developers richer than ever. We can't bend over for development and for things for which we have not voted. Anybody else like to exercise their right to rebuttal? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't say affordable housing. I was talking about the RENA. So RENA is not all affordable housing. A portion of the RENA is, is affordable housing. Um, and, um, you know, all the studies do show that you can't build 800 units without bringing prices down. We live in a capitalist society. So I can't imagine a situation where we, you know, were to figure out a way to build those 800 units, which is a lot of units, and we're, we only have to plan for them. We don't have to actually build them. But if we were to build them, prices would have to go down. So. <laughs> anyone else? Nope. Ford, the next question will go to you. And it relates to, from the uh, questioner again, last week the Fairfax Town Council unanimously passed two ordinances strengthening just cause eviction protections and establishing rent stabilization uh, in making Fairfax the first town in Marin County to do so, so says the person here. The San Anselmo Town Council will be considering similar policies based on Fairfax ordinances in the coming months. Do you support rent stabilization and just cause eviction protections for San Anselmo? We already have them. Uh, they're uh, implemented by the state of California. Uh, we don't need to independently do that. Uh, what Fairfax uh, has done is not even going to be controlled by Fairfax. It's going to be administered uh, by the city of Berkeley and a private organization. In San Anselmo, we have the type of mixed-use development that the state is commanding uh, since the 1960s. We have many apartment buildings throughout our downtown area along Green Greenfield, Red Hill, and Sir Francis Drake. There are no reports of rent gouging in San Anselmo during the pandemic and continuing, and no need for any greater rent control than the state of California already provides. There are many mom and pop landlords, including elderly people and people who have second units called alternative dwelling units. The ability for owners to stay in their homes with rising property and local taxes uh, is important. Rent control will hamper that. As it impacts constitutionally protected property rights, rent control, as I mentioned before, is one of those issues that's highly controversial and that ought to be subjected to a vote. We need more democracy, not less. It should go to the voters. Uh, I have Section 8 tenants and work cooperatively with Marin Housing Authority and treat my tenants well. We don't need rent control in San Anselmo. Board, thank you. Carol. Yeah, so, um I grew up in affordable housing, so I have a different um, kind of bent on this. 25% um, of the residents in San Anselmo are renters. 52% of those are housing insecure. Um, one of the misperceptions um, on this rent control idea is that it will include ADUs. It will not. It includes only the 70 multi-unit housing uh, apartment buildings that are in San Anselmo right now. It will not include any new ADUs and it will not include ADUs on your property. There are also exclusions for uh, people who are elderly. There are also it, there can be exclusions for all kinds of things. We can decide that as a group when we sit down and discuss it. Um, one of the other things I wanted to say, uh, let me see here, um, let me look over my notes. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. I, I absolutely do think that we can keep um, rent to under 5% increases every year. And yes, it is offered by the state, but the state uh, is a 5% plus a cost of living, which could be as much as 10% in a year. So what these good people who are San Anselmo residents, I've met them, they just had a baby, um, they're wonderful people. Um, they all are just trying to live here. They're, they're families that I, some of them I grew up with. Um, and I want them to have a place to call home here. Carol, thank you. Guy. Well, I would be willing to look at the, the proposal that would ever be brought to the San Anselmo Council for rent control. I, I feel that the, we, the landlords have this power that I get. I get that we're living in our 
our system of capital and people making money. And, you know, perhaps if I had a house and could get some income from somebody else, I very well may. But I, I think we've got a, an element where we need to make a statement on behalf of protecting this quantity of apartment dwelling people from being uh, abused by entities that are buying large amounts of property throughout California. I'm not sure what, what that constitutes in San Anselmo. I really do not know. I, I know that it is a, it is obviously, it is a chore and a challenge for anybody to be, um, you know, a local worker in a, in a market or any, like I have been and done. Um, but I certainly, I wouldn't cannibalize my community either on behalf of it as the state mandates are doing. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's somehow we have to find this path through. And I, I feel like I'm willing to look at the plans. Uh, they have to have protections for small people in dealing with uh, rentals. But um, I think we could leave a, uh, make a message to landlords in general and maybe that would help keep rents down. Steve Berto, thank you, Guy. Thank you. Well, I guess one of the good things about being an incumbent is, you know, I'm already on the record on this. Uh, I was the person that originally brought this up before the town council for us to have the discussion. And I did so after uh, I heard from over a hundred of our residents who either reached out to me personally or came to one of our meetings to speak during public open time. I think when you look at it, you know, 25% of our housing stock is rental units, about 33% of our residents are renters um, to not have a conversation about it is absolutely wrong um, you know if we if there was a discussion in town about the color of uh, you know light posts right we would have that discussion if enough people brought it to us and, and were concerned about it um, you know I think everybody's focused on Fairfax but there's this has been an issue that's been gaining a lot of traction within the Ross Valley Larkspur is now working on an ordinance um, and uh, you know I, I, I understand that you know we want to do something that doesn't hurt you know mom and pop or senior landlords that are good landlords and really participating in the process in good faith um, but I have heard stories um, about bad property bad property owners and I think it's worth at least having the discussion at our town council and we will be doing that great thank you Steve Next question, we're going to start with Carol. Okay. And it's, what can the town of San Anselmo do to continue to make progress on addressing equity issues? Well, I'm going to pull up my equity card right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I, I approve, um, I support Steve Berto's approach um, of creating a, a DEI committee. Um, I think there should be a town audit. It sounds like there's one um, being conducted right now. Um, I think that we should consider gender neutral facilities at town hall. I also, um, you know, at my organization, Marin County Bicycle Coalition, um, when I first came in, I noticed that all of the images and all of the services that we were providing were the vast majority of them were for white middle class men and I, I we did a strategic plan we came out of that process and decided we needed a lot more program for w programs for women a lot more programs for black and brown people and we also needed to serve younger people so we have since I started as I mentioned in the intro uh, four new programs um, one of them directly working with kids from the canal neighborhood and um, Sinaloa neighborhood in Novato we give them bikes we work with them over the course of a year uh, the program is bilingual and we help them then advocate for safer places to ride these kids are having such a blast on their bikes, and um, it's because we're really opening up to a wider audience that we're able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Guy. Um, the racial equity issue and equity in general is, is a really, uh, you know, it's an it's a issue of our times. We hear it all uh, in, in almost every newspaper store, uh, had, um, front page will have stories about it. For us, I feel that we are caught up in a cultural uh, clash of looking backwards. 
We know that right now, we as a people need equity that looks to me at what is financial. It is, it is about your work abilities and what you get paid. And the equity of, in the town of San Anselmo that has to be addressed is how are we collaborating with simply being a town for millionaires? How does the town take part in that by thinking that taxes are no big deal? Uh, by th There's just so many different levels. How do we protect this housing stock of small bungalows in our town from being flipped or expanded where they'll never be able to be uh, anybody dream of owning one who is a, um, you know, it's the heart, there is no middle class anymore. But uh, anyways, I guess I've run out of time. But I think we have to look at it differently. I think the people of uh, San Isabel and mostly of America are, are beautiful and we love, uh, we love the diversity and we can expand it. Steve, and just to repeat, the question is, uh, what can the town do to continue making progress addressing equity issues? Sure, and, and I think, you know, I'll start by saying I think we've taken a big step with our Racial Equity Committee. Um, it has become a model for other communities. Um, we started with a narrowly tailored charter that focused on three things. Taking a look at our town trainings for our staff and our uh, town council and committee members. Uh, we wanted to proceed with a policy audit um, an equity audit, if you will, of our town policies, and we wanted to determine the future of the committee. And we have made progress and have almost completed all of those. And one of the most important things was the determination on what the future of what was initially the ad hoc committee and is now the standing committee. Um, and I think that was a, a big jump. We have some remarkable people on this committee and you know one of the people said somebody had said when we were going through the process of forming the committee like okay so what are you guys going to do and you know what are you going to do when this you know equity audit is done or when the trainings have been examined and then right after that we had a number of uh, hateful acts happen in the town and people were glad that there was a place to go to kind of talk about these things and that there was a town body that would talk about these things and figure out solutions and how to stand against hate and also how to make our town more equitable, diverse, and inclusive. Steve, thanks. Ford? Um, Steve's talked about having uh, conversations. Uh, at our last council meeting, uh, council member Eileen Burke brought to the attention that the three men on the San Anselmo Town Council hold all seven of the seats on the five most influential committees that make major policy decisions and have substantial bu budgets totaling in the ten to hundreds of millions of dollars. The Ross Valley Fire Department, Transportation Authority of Marin, Marin Clean Energy, Central Marin Police Agency, uh, the Marin Wildlife uh, Protection Agency. Although I've benefited from this, I recognize that our residents elected the five council members with the expectation that all would share governance, and this includes equitable and equal representation on substantial committees. I voted to continue the conversation and, and advocated sharing. The old paternal attitude where men decide if and when to allow women on, on committees is preventing our residents from receiving the skill and knowledge of two great council members, Eileen Burke and Alexis Feynman. It's time for that to end. Uh, there was a three to two vote. Brutal, Colbert, and Feynman voted not to further the conversation and not to share. That's the action that was taken to kill the conversation and prevent sharing by the men of important agency assignments. That's wrong. We ought to share. Okay. Rebuttals? I'd like to rebut. Steve, indeed. 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, Ford's correct. We did have a discussion, um, which there wasn't going to be a vote, but then Ford created a vote at the end so we could create that talking point. So, <clears throat> Senator, you know Jack Kennedy, because if you're going to sit here and try and paint me as somebody who is against diversity or inclusion, 
I, I think anybody who knows me, anybody who's worked with me in the town knows that that is ridiculous. I actually didn't support that because it's not the right thing. It was an automatic rotation. And what happens when you have the person that doesn't believe the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority is worthwhile rotating onto that seat? What happens when you have the person who's against climate change that rotates onto the Climate Action Committee? I am prepared to bring forth a proposal that is more equitable, fair, and does not serve just one or two council members. Anyone else rebuttal? I will. Yes, of course, Scott. Uh, on, the, on the subject of equity, which That's, we're basically on still, yes. I just want to read in the mission statement that is being drafted, because I really do feel that when, speaking of Jack Kennedy, when he suggested in 1963 that we have to have a place where race has no place in government or in law, I, I think that this is, a, is an important place to, for all of us to start looking at. The draft mission statement says that we're trying to overturn far-reaching and long-standing systemic and structural racist policies, behaviors, and decision-making in the town of Santa Simona community. I mean, I just really would like to see the proof of what this long-standing racist policies are in Santa Simo. Thank you. And That's the rebuttal. But Guy, uh, you have the next question. I so hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. As do uh, I. <laughs> yeah, please. So, um... So yeah, so I was actually really pleased with uh, Council, members Bur Council Member Burks bringing up the committee assignments as a woman. I agreed with all of what she said. Um, I think uh, Ford trying to be the hero here is frankly laughable. That's all I have to say. Okay, everybody gets one round though. Uh, uh, so when uh, I haven't had mine. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna, uh, uh, he was the question. I was the question. Well, of course, of course, of course. Yes, please, right. Ford. So, so that's a personal attack there by Terrell. And she's engaged in lots of those personal attacks. It's really inappropriate in a small town to carry on negative campaigning and have other people do that. I called the question in our council because of what I saw as a lack of courage by my fellow council members talking around and ducking the issue. I couldn't stand it and forced everybody to take a position by making the motion. And it was not for generating a talking point. It was to force confrontation of a very important issue. And that may be part of what the uh, persons consider me uh, to be objectionable or divisive. I don't think so. I'm just direct. Guy, the next question goes to you and it relates to transit. What transit improvements would you suggest to enhance and expand public transit service in San Anselmo and the Ross Valley? Well, um, as a public transportation person who does not own a car and gets around frequently with Golden Gate Transit, the system has not really been improved in 40 years. It's, it's there, but actually it seems to be much weaker in the evening hours or just getting back and forth from even from San Rafael to San Anselmo after eight o'clock. Uh, now someone has the brilliant idea of creating a second bus stop for downtown San Anselmo that's no longer part of the hub. You would think the hub would indicate something for bus stops. So now either the 22 drives past the hub and stops at Bank Street. If you go over there to wait for a bus hoping to not to get a bus in 10 or 15 minutes, you have to consult. You might have to walk 50 yards over to Bank Street. You might get there a minute late. You, you walk back again. You stand out there in the hot sun on Bank Street. Uh, I don't know whose idea it was, except that now that I see that these hub mandates for the new housing stuff in Sacramento, maybe we're better off because if you have too many bus stops, then they'll say, oh, we have to have more density. So maybe that's part of that strategy. Uh, there's a lot that I think is just incompetent or uh, don't, do people know that this is, this is, uh, anyways, that's one basic little item on the agenda. Yes, Steve, the question is what transit improvements uh, would you suggest for enhanced experience in San Anselmo and the Ross Valley? So guys speak in my language there. Um, I, I try to take the bus as much as possible. My office is in Martinez, and a few years ago they made changes to the main lines that go by Sir Francis Drake Boulevard, which is right by where I live. 
Um, it has been, it, it has made it tremendously difficult for me to take public transit to work now because I have to walk about half a mile to go and grab the bus. Um, the good thing about that is that it, it's still viable and I think if we just add, made some route adjustments, we could actually be there. Another thing is I, I think, you know, and I've seen this pop up during the pandemic when people were more working from home, but I've seen bike ridership go through the roof. Uh, particularly in San Anselmo, and I think making a more bikeable community now that people are more and more working remotely, working from home, uh, we're going to see you know more and more people biking, um, and so we need to have safety and we need to have uh, accessible routes uh, for people to bike on. Um, but ultimately, our it has been said since the day I moved to Marin County that ugh, the public transit sucks in Marin County. And it does. We need better um, because you can't take a bike everywhere. I don't want to take a car everywhere. Um, and you know, our our network of routes on the Marin Transit and Golden Gate Transit line only work if you're going to certain spots. For somebody like me that's trying to get to the North Martinez BART station, it doesn't always work for me. So I think just a little work on routes, route integrity, um, would be great and would move the ball forward a lot. Or green, public transit's the issue. Um, yeah, one of the transit improvements uh, that uh, Ms. Cullaway has been campaigning on when she goes door to door is turning San Anselmo Avenue into a one-way street with a bike lane. And I think that disregards uh, what the people in San Anselmo really want. Uh, what the people in San Anselmo want is, is to be able to get around. San Anselmo has a substantial number of older people Older people can't ride bikes necessarily. It's the, the idea is opposed by the majority of businesses on San Anselmo Avenue and by the residents. So I, I think the idea of turning San Anselmo Avenue into a one-way street so as to be able to put in a bike lane that doesn't exist now uh, is a bad idea. Otherwise, with respect to the local bus service, I do take it from time to time and what Although it may not be the greatest in the world, I'd like it if it would be more frequent, but it is generally on time and gets you where, to, where it says it's going to get you when it says it'll get you there. So that's reliable. It'd be better if it were more frequent, uh, but there's not the ridership. You can't afford it. So unless you have the subsidy, subsidy to pay for it, uh, it's, it's not going to work. So uh, transit... It could be better, but it's not too bad. Uh, one way on San Anselmo Avenue, really bad idea. Or thank you, Terrell. Uh, I have never mentioned one way on San Anselmo in any of my conversations. I have heard that people on Ford's campaign team have told people that I've said that, but I have not said that. Um, that would be a part of a larger discussion that would include studies of traffic flow, I've been, in tra I've been in transportation advocacy now for going on 15 years. You don't just go and make things happen. That would cause a huge traffic jam throughout the town. Um, and telling people that I'm saying that just so that you can get them up in arms is, is really kind of par for the course um, and disappointing. Um, this question was about transit. Yes. Um, and I think that uh, youth should get free passes. I think there needs to be more than one bus on the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. <laughs> I think um, we need more bike racks and there needs to be increased service. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Let's go to the uh, next question. And I think, uh, oh, of course, rebuttal. Yes, indeed, Ford. Um, quickly, on October 5th at 49 Rutherford, uh, I was advised by the resident there that what you told him exactly was that, that uh, what you wanted to do was and you, what you advocated for and what you thought would be a good idea uh, would be to have a one-way street in San Anselmo. Also, your uh, neighbors on Carlson uh, near the intersection of uh, Rancho uh, told me the same thing in a live conversation with them. So uh, while I understand your denial, I don't believe it. Carol, comment? I just, it's just not true. Okay. So. Uh, let's, let's move on to the next question then. And in fact, the next question will be Steve Berto. Oh. Uh, what, very basic, classic question. Oh, love them. What's your top three priorities if elected or reelected? Perfect. Um, I'll keep it short. Uh, <laughs> fire protection and emergency preparedness, addressing climate change 
and roads, parks, and infrastructure. The same things that I have, have always been my priority and I've gotten results for San Anselmo on. I'm really proud of the work we're doing at Memorial Park. Like I said, in the wake of the uh, failure of Measure M in 2019, I brought both sides together. We all agreed on the core work that needed to be done. We just, there were differences in approach. We sat down, we got together, we made a three-year plan, and we got it done. The skate park, the playground, the pathway around the park, and the field drainage and irrigation system, which is gonna cut water usage at Memorial Park, our town's biggest water user, by 50%. So, you know, uh, those are my three priorities. I'm really also proud of the strides. San Anselmo continues to lead the way on climate change. Um, we passed a ban on uh, future gas stations and the expansion of existing gas stations. We passed a building electrification ordinance. And I'm really, really happy. One of my goals in my next term is going to be working with our Climate Action Committee to develop a solar resiliency hub at Town Hall. And that's something that's got me super fired up. Board. Um, I'm just going to address one, which is the plaza. Uh, there's no point while we should be deprived of the wonderful amenity that the, while the county dithers. The plaza is the freely breathing heart and lungs, vital to the people and economy of San Anselmo. It is now in a jail that hurts our businesses. I led protests upon its closure. With the briefest photo op appearance by Steve Berto, I haven't seen any other candidates out there. As the town's representative on the county flood committee, I discovered we were about to give up the plaza for nothing. I investigated and confirmed my facts. Federal regulatory rules control. The no rise rule says projects can't increase downstream flood level. If so, the county must pay to mitigate harm or if the property owner rejects the mitigation officer by eminent domain, the county must condemn the property. The bridge can't come out until the county mitigates at least 20 properties, which will cost 10 million bucks. The flood fee, as I said, it's generated over 39 million. The county has spent 35. Having wasted 35 million, the county has no money. The flood fee was enacted in 07. No rise was promulgated in 09. Ross Valley FEMA flood mapping done in 14. The county failed to do its homework. Or if it did, it failed to be straight with San Anselmo staff. As of two years ago, our staff did not know about the no-rise rule. The county didn't tell us, did not act as a trustworthy and collaborative partner. If the county cannot get its flood control act together, there is no need for San Anselmo to continue to play second fiddle to it. Thank you, Ford. Daryl. Yeah, so my three main priorities, I guess if we have to narrow them down to three, are climate change, affordable housing, and safe streets. Um, climate change, so 50% or more than 50% of our climate emissions come from transportation. I've made a career in transportation advocacy. I know what it takes to get us out of our cars and to, if we can, not everybody can ride bikes and, and walk, but those of us who can, 60% of us would like to do it more, but we don't feel like it's safe. So there are levers we have as a town to make things safer for people who walk and bike, who want to walk and bike more, and that would make a huge impact on climate change emissions in our town. Um, there are other things that can be done. I'm really happy we're ahead of the curve as far as building electrification. I would like it to be, I would like there to be no exclusions for major remodels. I feel like when people are doing major remodels, they should also have to electrify as well. Um, affordable housing, I, I kind of talked about that already, so I'm not gonna go into it too, in too much detail, but let it be known that I'm, uh, I'm very um, adamant about it. Um, and then safe streets, uh, we have just started at my organization a program called eBike Smart Marin. You might have seen me on channel uh, seven last night talking about it. Um, it's going to create a teen safety certification or teen safety program for uh, kids who ride e-bikes and parents as they're purchasing them to keep our teens safe. Great, thank you. Carol, the guy. Um, Everything is about local democracy and local ecology. I had three, three items that I chose uh, as my number, my statement, my positions. The first one is the mandated housing. I don't think we recognize the magnitude of its, of its 
uh, destruction of democracy and of ecology. Talking about permeable surfaces, 850 units in San Anselmo. We, that it would be the number one. And it speaks to a, a sense of how do we get away from this mandating things. It's almost like a mania. It's like everybody gets elected in order that they have notches on their belt of all these laws that they've passed and ordinances. The platform. The platform in the park was my number two position. The, the county, it, it's, it seems like there almost should be a, a grand jury investigation. I do not understand how the, the news of FEMA became hidden for so long. And I, and I do believe that the detention basins pushing forward with that plan when I think that the evidence would have been clearly that it was not going to be the save all position, I think that was flawed. And now in San Anselmo, I feel like I would bring that whole sense to the, count, the town itself. We can't keep mandating, mandating elect electrical houses. What, what is the grid? This is California. I mean, what are we putting people in these positions? Mandating no uh, ch chainsaws, gas powered. It's like, stop. What can the people do? Thank you, Guy. Uh, next question. Can I, uh, can I, my oh, name was mentioned, so I just uh, want to uh, rebut. Sure. So, um, it, you know, I'll, I'll agree with Ford on the plaza. I mean, this is a very, it is the issue of the moment, if you take a snapshot, right? And, um, you know, I think the way that this came down in our town was very upsetting. It was upsetting for the staff. It was upsetting for the council. It was upsetting for the residents. And we are going to do everything within our power to keep that plaza open. Look, we have a lot of three, two, or four, one votes on our council. This is one where all of the council members are in lockstep. Um, and like I said, we're going to do everything we can to keep that open. But when we talk about priorities, taking the snapshot issue is not the big priority. The priority question is about what do you stand for? What are your core issues? Keeping the plaza open is a snapshot. Well, Ford, the next question will go to you. And um, another classic question. What distinguishes you from the other candidates in this election? Um, well, I think first what distinguishes me uh, is my age. Uh, I'm 69 years old, uh, so my demographic uh, is uh, much older uh, than, than, well, maybe not Guy, um, but uh, compared to, to Steve and, and Terrell. Um, but what really sets me apart, I think, is that I'm not willing to go along in order to get along. Uh, like I said in my opening, uh, I, I look at people in the eye and I tell the truth. And when I'm wrong, I admit that I'm wrong. And when I, change, when I am, I change my position. Like Ralph Waldo Emerson said, a foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. And it's hard being an elected public official. You take a lot of grief and that's part of the, the kitchen atmosphere. If you can't take the heat, uh, you have to get out. So uh, I'm pretty, pretty willing to take the heat, <laughs> as, this, as this election shows. Uh, and um, also, uh, I'm different in terms of, of San Anselmo. Uh, I listen to what the residents want, and I advocate for that. I don't make up people's minds for them on cannabis, on rent control or on anything else. Thank you, Ford. Daryl. Uh, can you ask the question again? Of course. Please? What distinguishes you from the other candidates in this election? Um, well, <laughs> I'm the only woman. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, oh. The other thing is, um, you know, I mentioned before, I'm the only one who's actually run an organization. Um, I'm known as a very caring, kind leader, somebody who listens to others and really has life work balance in mind when I work with people. Um, I will never send inflammatory, abusive e emails to somebody's staff. Um, I will always uh, try to lead with kindness uh, at the forefront. I'm all about solutions orientation. 
I bring to the table a lot of environmental expertise and a lot of expertise on how we can make things change at the local level as far as climate change goes. Carol, thank you. Guy, what distinguishes you from the other candidates in this election? Well, besides being from the class of 1970, um, <laughs> I think I, I'm almost completely different, but I, I know we all have similarities. We all overlap, and I want to work with the council, whoever is my, my partners on the council. It is a team sport. Or at least things get accomplished when you can work uh, cooperatively. I believe that basically we have lost track of what power to the people means. We live in a society that does not trust the people. We have to govern, legally obstruct them or tell them to behave, to do this, to do that. Uh, I feel it's all upside down. And I feel that the, the um, negativity of even the, the partisanship, that we live in a blue bubble. Well, to me, it'd be like, what if it was red, white, and blue? What if conservative was part of our, our world that we didn't deny or looked at it, everything? And I think we all try to do that, but we've become so polarized and so prone to look at things through a lens of what I would say is political correctness. Uh, and I don't mean to just put the label on it that, you know, avoids a, a good discussion. But we've got some healing to do, and we're all about human beings. It's not about color. It's not about all these little issues that make us different. It's the issues that make us the same. And I guess that's about it. Thank you, Guy. Steve. Yeah, I think um, to start with, I'll, I'll say my track record and my fully immersive approach. Um, I pride myself on being one of, if not the most accessible town council member. If you call me up, if you email me, if you ran into me on the street and said, hey, I want to talk about this town issue, um, you've gotten a response and we've sat down within 48 hours of that contact. Um, also, when we were discussing the parklet issue, we had local merchants that were raising issues. Um, I went down and I worked in a few of their businesses to experience what they were experiencing. That, that fully immersive approach I think is something different and, and what I've heard from, from people is a refreshing thing in local government. But ultimately, I, I think what sets me apart in this race from the other candidates are my endorsements. As I said, I am the only candidate in this race endorsed by every single group that's made an endorsement. I am the only candidate endorsed by the Marin Democratic Party. I am the only candidate endorsed by the Sierra Club. And I am the only candidate endorsed by the Marin Independent Journal, our local newspaper. Um, not to mention over a hundred of our strongest community leaders in San Anselmo, including uh, former six former mayors and council members, and virtually a member of every, at least one member of almost every town committee or commission in our town. Thank you, Steve. Any rebuttals? I do have a rebuttal. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Terrell just raised earlier that um, she was the only one to run a new organization. I think it's important to note that and it feels like a former lifetime. I was the executive director of the Connecticut Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now, ACORN. Um, and I have also served as the vice president of a public, public affairs consulting firm here in Marin County, Kathleen Russell Consulting. So I have a lot of experience running an organization, but I, I, in 2015, I transitioned to the public sector because my passion is public service. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else? Uh, no? Well, this, uh, this is uh, the opportunity now for uh, starting with uh, uh, Guy uh, to uh, talk to the good folks out there who are going to be casting a ballot. Perhaps after the show tonight, they're going to sit down and they're going to say, I'm going to vote. But either that or they'll do it before or on November 8th. Why should they vote for you? What's, tell us, what's the story? Well, well, Dick, the story, I think, is a sense of direction. It's not that I have the great management skills, though I think I do, that haven't been tapped. It is a sense of direction that we need, a compass pointing in a direction that says, yes, we can, and please back off and we can find a way. So I'm gonna say yes to the permanent establish establishment of the platform over the San Anselmo Creek. Yes to the restoration of Creek Park as it was designed by Dan Goltz 50 years ago. No to concrete and pavement added to it. No redwood decking underneath to restore like the friends of Creek Park wish it to be. I'd say yes to an annual planting of trees. When I came to uh, 
San Anselmo in 1974, I w 75, I was lucky enough to be there when the redwood trees in Robeson Park were just spindly little saplings. Same thing with Creek Park and same thing across the street from where I had a little market. Redwood trees grow spectacularly in 50 years. We need to be planting more trees. Let's say yes to active participation in town activities, not just rocking on the avenue or uh, voting day, but coming out to council meetings. I want the council, I want the town to open up. We have a two-week, every two-week newsletter that never says anything that's on the agenda. It's all this public relations stuff of town events. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. And the 10 and a half hours a week when the town is only open for, for the public to come in. Why only 10 and a half hours a week? And I want a commission of community members to go over all the ordinances. I don't know, do we really have 1,165? Maybe it started since 1907. But can we go through it and see what is needed and what is not? What is just burdensome? What, what is just frivolous? We're not all millionaires in, in uh, San Anselmo. And then I want my fellow citizens to join me in the challenge for reducing our human footprint and our carbon footprint as individuals, the way we travel, the way we live. 4.6 billion airline flights a year, I was told. And only 80% uh, of the people on the planet do not fly in airlines. So that's a lot of us living a high lifestyle. Guy Meyer, thank you. Thank you. Tara. Uh, thank you to all the candidates who came out and to Dick and to Cost for hosting. Um, I'm running for town council because I love this town. And I believe my collaborative, so solutions-oriented approach can help lead San Anselmo into the future. As your elected representative, I'll work to advance community vibrancy and our quality of life at every opportunity, protecting our parks and open space, taking local action on climate change, preparing for natural disasters and fire, and providing affordable housing for our local workforce. It has been a tremendous honor to go through this process. I have learned so much by talking with hundreds of you through the, these past few months, and I truly want to thank you all for welcoming me into your homes. I'm humbled and honored by all the people who have knocked on doors, waved signs, written to their friends, given donations, and helped energize and spread the word about my campaign. I want to finish with a quote from Gino Singleton, who I worked with on the Betterfield Safety Committee. And we didn't get to talk about that, but I, you know, I was on the committee that helped kind of reconfigure uh, Betterfield for safety, safety for people who are walking and biking to school. Um, so here's what she says about me. Terrell drives with passion and commitment to get things done for our community. She is a source of truth and empowerment for positive change and does not waver in her stance to execute with excellence. Terrell leads by listening, which demonstrates her ability to have an honest assessment with practical time-bound solutions for the greater good of our beloved community. I hope you'll go to my website at terrellforsananselmo.com and learn more about me. Um, of all my responses tonight will be up on there, and I would be so honored to have your vote. Thank you. Tara Galloway, thank you. Thank you. Board Green, please. No, I'm at the end. Oh, you are at the end, indeed, Steve. No, I'm at the end. I started off. Actually, he did start out. Ford Green is, is next. Oh, I can't keep track. Um, I've been on the town council for 15 years and with help have accomplished a lot. I currently sit on the boards of Marin Clean Energy. I'm on its executive committee, chair of the technical committee, and ad hoc contracts committee. I'm on the Central Marin Police Authority where I served as chairman. The Ross Valley Fire Department, a four jurisdiction joint powers authority where last year I, I served as chairman and led negotiations amongst the JPA members that resulted in a unanimous agreement on how to manage the fallout from Ross pulling out its fire station from our infrastructure. In part, it will result in our meeting national standards by having three persons on each fire en engine. Flood Zone 9 Advisory Board, I started to confront the county about planning to destroy San Anselmo's Creek Park Plaza without pro providing any flood fixing in San Anselmo. I'm an, a ballot argument signer of both San Anselmo's tax measures H and J, so as to continue critical funding for both our public library and town infrastructure. My record is, as mayor, navigated the early days of COVID-19 and the following economic and social recovery, ensuring the purchases of Sky Ranch, Bald Hill, and Hawthorne Canyon open space. 
the only council member to stand up to save Memorial Park from becoming a detention basin, which by initiative the voters agreed. Opposed the $9 million tax for Memorial Park that was voted down in 2019. Without that tax, we are renovating the park now. I was the first to advocate consolidation of Twin Cities and San Anselmo into the Central Marin Police Agency, saving our town millions. Maintaining and repairing roads through Measure D and current ballot Measure J. Adopting mem membership in Marine Clean Energy. I was the swing vote. Enacting ordinances prohibiting the use of plastic straws, plastic use single, leaf blowers, gas powered, uh, and restrict, restricting McMansion development. I'm endorsed by Damon Connolly, Marin County Supervisor, Eileen Burke, Town Council Member, MMWD Director Larry Bragman, former mayors Paul Chignell, Jeff Crute, and Matt Brown, open space co-chairs Jonathan Braun and Stanley Radke, iconic Marin County environmental leader Dr. Marty Griffin, the Marin Professional Firefighters Union 1775, and the Marin Realtors Association. Thank you. Thank you, Fort Green. Steve Berto. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Cost. Thank you to my fellow candidates. Um, as I said, it has been the honor of my, of my lifetime serving our town as a member of the town council. And I'm extremely proud of the work we got done over the last three years. Um, San Anselmo is alive like never before. And, and that's a true statement. Um, we often hear in this work that most of the work happens in between the meetings and I can guarantee you that you don't find you can't find somebody that works harder for you than me in that regard in my first term we had major issues determining the future of the Ross Valley Fire Department a pandemic the likes the world has never seen the renovation of Memorial Park these are the Haley's Comets of local government and to have them all happen within one term was pretty phenomenal and I was thrilled and excited to have the opportunity to serve you during those and provide sound measured leadership I am somebody who is going to not bloviate I'm going to work behind the scenes I'm going to listen I'm going to collaborate I'm going to bring people together to get you results so when you go to fill out your ballot you want to feel good about somebody who's going to get you results in San Anselmo, you can feel good about checking the box for Steve Berto. You can learn more at my website, BertoForSanAnselmo.com, and I thank you all. I would be honored to have your vote. Steve Berto, thank you, and thank all four of you. Uh, somebody said tonight, uh, I mean, it's been hard to be a public official. That's correct. I did it years ago. The other side of the coin is, though, it's extraordinarily rewarding once you do it. And I urge people out there to get involved. Either run next time there's an election, apply for a commission, be a volunteer, do something because these four people have taken their time out to work to volunteer, essentially volunteer. That's what the town council is, because they love their community. So I just want to say thank you to the four people that come. The system wouldn't work without you guys. And it wouldn't work too well in this county without cost. Thank you very Doug much. Doug Kelly. Thank you very much. I want to thank the candidates for coming. I want to thank you, Dick, for uh, moderating. Always a great job. I want to thank uh, Marin TV, which put this together at the last minute and did a great job. I want to thank them very, very much. Uh, I want to remind you that the Coalition of Sensible Taxpayers is an unpaid group. Um, we put on these type of events all the time. We did the Marin District Attorney's Debate. Uh, we did a Marin Municipal Water District Forum uh, recently. Um, we've done a lot of these forums. Uh, our job takes money, but doesn't go to us. So I hope you'll consider going to our website, www.costmarin.org, and uh, signing up for our newsletter and making a donation. Thanks again, all of you, very much. And Election Day is one more time, Dick. Ah, uh, November. It starts today. Well. Belts are out there. But the last time to vote is November 8th. November 8th. Thank you all very much, and good night. <laughs> good night, everybody.